morning and welcome to CASAS. We're so glad that you're here. If you're visiting us for the first time today, we ask that you text the word guest to the number below because we'd love to connect with you. Also, if you haven't yet, be sure to stop by our welcome center or you can join us right here in the auditorium following either service at our welcome party in the East Alcove. You would have also received a welcome card. We ask that you fill that out and either hand it in with the volunteer from guest services or you can drop it in the giving boxes in the back of the room. We'd like to know that you were here and it's a way for us to follow up with you and learn about your experience. Thank you to everyone who participated with us in our Love Our City event that took place yesterday by either serving at a specific location or by supporting the day financially. We value making a difference with you in the lives of others in surrounding areas and continuing to develop meaningful relationships with our community partners. Your support and participation matter in expressing what we hold to be true. As a church, we want to love people. Today, we're going to reflect on all the amazing things that happened yesterday, as well as celebrate the organizations that are consistently putting in the hard work every day. It's a privilege to partner with them. Thanks, as always, for being with us and joining us in our collective mission of letting everyone around us know that God accepts them for who they are, loves them unconditionally, and that there's freedom in that. Well, good morning. We have some things to celebrate from this weekend, so would you stand? We're going to worship. This is a new song, but you can uh, join in whenever you would like.
you have witnessed the faithfulness of God in your life. Amen. We get to worship him out of that this morning and continue to praise him. Will you sing this out with me?
missed it, haven't we? He is amazing! Before you sit down, I would love to have a time where we can greet each other. This time, I would love for you to say your name and something that you're passionate about in Tucson. It could be an organization you're passionate about, a group of people you're passionate about, or maybe you're just passionate about dogs or horses. But go ahead and introduce yourself and say what you're passionate about. I love all the conversations, all the great things you're passionate about. One of the things that I'm super passionate about as the pastor of Outreach is that we could take the love and acceptance and freedom of Jesus outside of the walls of Casas. And we had a great opportunity yesterday to do that. Who was part of Love Our City? Woo! <laughs> Oh my gosh, it was so amazing. I was the one who decided that I was going to try to go to all of the 20 different projects. I totally didn't make it to all the 20 projects, but I tried to get to a lot of them, and it was so amazing to hear all of the stories that are happening. I got to meet a gentleman that was at Primavera, and he was there, had recently become homeless, and he actually had a master's in engineering, and he was just looking for a job. I got to go to Tucson Refugee Ministry, where our bike group here at Casas built so many bikes for refugees for sustainable transportation. Isn't that that amazing? Woo! Yeah, so excited. I actually got to go with the Buffalo Grass group, and so there's a thing called the Buffalo Grass Slayers, which is kind of a cool name, but they go throughout Catalina State Park and they get rid of this invasive species. But we had an amazing team from Casas Church that came and helped with that. We also got to go to lots of places like Ronald McDonald House and love on families who have children that are sick. We got to go to Gap Ministries and help to just stock their shelves. We got to help with different things. But I wanted to not just pat our backs and say, hey, good job, Casas, because we do this for one day, even though our hopes are that we'll do it every day that we will get passionate about something that's happening out there and that we will go out and just love on our city but we have organizations that do this all the time and i wish i could bring up every single leader of the organizations and help you to understand their passion and the why that they do what they do but i have one organization leader that's coming up right now we have tom mckinney he is from ICS, so um, Interfaith Community Services, and we just did a pasta drive not too long ago, and I know we didn't get to give you the numbers on the pasta drive, but I wanted Tom to be able to tell you. The pasta drive raised 4,000 pounds of pasta for people in need. <clears throat> And I think there's a group of high school and middle schoolers here that earn donuts because they did such a great job. So they need a shout out. Yeah. That's so awesome. You know, I was able to be a nonprofit leader for about four years. And for nonprofits, it's, um, you know, you're seeking to do really good things out in the community. You're seeking to be the hands and feet of Jesus out there. And you're doing it every single day. What is your passion behind what you do? What is your why? Yeah, the why is because we change people's lives every day. For however much time we're able to spend with them, and that you did yesterday, for the moments that you did, it will change somebody's life. For the positive, for maybe a day, maybe a week, maybe a month, maybe forever. So it's that look forward for people to make sure that they're going to be better because of all of us. Yeah. And another question that I would have is, what is a challenge that you have? Oh, just one? Yeah. <laughs> oh. 
Well, you know, I'm blessed here today to speak on behalf of all the nonprofits that you served yesterday. And it was because I didn't have to do my hair this morning for the early <laughs> service. But I think I speak for all nonprofits. It's about money, it's resources, it's volunteers, it's time that people can give to us. It's showing up uh, and helping us. And again, it doesn't have to be every day of the week, but it makes a difference. Last year, we thought we'd see maybe a less of a need of people in, in uh people that need us, and that's not the case. Uh, there is more and more people coming to nonprofits every day asking for help. And unfortunately, we're put in a position of having to say no sometimes. So again, if there's more money or more time, that is a super big help for all of us. Can you tell me a little bit about the people that you serve? Yeah, I mean, they are like you. Um, they, they're not much different. They've just, in some cases, had a back, bad stroke of luck. Um, we had a gentleman yesterday that volunteered for us that, that sought me out at the end of the event and came and found me from Casas and said, I just want to thank you um, for letting me give back because I needed your services some time ago and um, you were there for me. So I always think about this, that we're all one step, step away from something tragic or needing somebody's help. So that's... That's the type of people we serve, not much different than you and I. I totally agree. And really just that relational piece of serving people is so incredibly important. I think what I have found is that most people, they definitely need some things like, you know, housing or food and all of those things, but they also need relationships. They need people in their lives and support systems. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, what it meant for Casas to be there yesterday? Well, it inspired everyone. For us, you came to our food bank, you came to a fundraiser for us, and it inspired the people that came to donate money. It inspired the volunteers. And really, she said, you know, we sh you shouldn't get a pat on the back. It should be the nonprofits. But I I'd like to give you a pat on the back because when we see you come out, it just reassures us that we're not in this alone, that, it is, that there is a, a, a pool, a, a team of people that care about our community. So it is meaningful whether you do it one day a week, one day a month, one day a year. It's inspiring for all of us that work in nonprofits. Thank you so much, Tom. We actually have a video of yesterday and all of the 20 different projects that we did yesterday. I'd love to just cut to that right now so we can celebrate. The beauty of this experience, I think for me, is knowing that I was able to help the community in a tangible way.
you, church, you, church family, did an amazing job of loving on people this week. We're so, so thankful. Part of our celebration, we actually have many of the organizations that we partnered with have tables out on the plaza. You may have seen some of them as you come in, but they're going to stay here for a little bit because we have an amazing lunch for everybody. We've got extra tables out there, time where everybody can just, you know, commune and be able to be together. Maybe you met somebody new that you had didn't know from Casas before while you're serving and you want to reconnect with them out on the plaza. Join us right after service. We've got lunch. We've got our partners here that you can talk to more. We're so super excited about that. I am so excited that we are the church that loves people and you all did an amazing job with that. I'm going to switch the gears a little bit here and talk a little bit about giving before we pray. You know, Casas has been my church home for 20 years. And for 20 years, my husband and I have just put on automatic giving um, so that we're able to give to the church every week because we believe what God is doing here. So we constantly are giving. We just we just make it automatic. It's a thing that we do because we believe in what we're doing. We believe how we are loving people. And we believe that what we can do is take that love and acceptance that's in here and spread it out to our community. It might be a big dream, but I know we can do it. But part of that It comes when we give, when we are trusted with the things that God gives us and we give that back to him. There's three ways you can give. You can give um, via mail. We've got boxes at each of the doors you can give as you leave, but you also can do that online if you go to um, our website. Um, let's, Let's have a time of prayer now. Dear Lord, you are amazing and it is completely humbling to be able to serve alongside these amazing organizations that love your people, people made in your image every single day. Lord, we're just thankful for those opportunities. We're thankful that you have blessed us in just giant and beautiful ways. And Lord, we're so thankful to trust you with those blessings by giving some of that back to you. Lord, we love our church family. We're so thankful for how you have just brought us all together underneath you. We're so thankful to be just Christ-centered. Lord, I pray that today, as we just learn more about you from Glenn, that you would um, just speak through him in a beautiful and powerful way. We love you so much. In your beautiful name, amen. Good morning. Well, good morning. (laughs) There you go. Yeah. It's so good to see uh, all of you here. And I know we've got people here. Uh, Maybe you're here for the very first time. Maybe uh, you're one of our partners and we got to rub shoulders and work with uh, you at some level uh, yesterday. Or maybe you're just a guest visiting here. Or maybe like this is your church home. Uh, Either way, um, I'm just glad that you're all here. And I want to take some time and just kind of talk about uh, a little bit of this whole thing that we walked through uh, yesterday uh, in one way or another, because there's just some things to re- reflect on and some things to celebrate. And, and, uh, and I want us to just ponder a part of this at a little deeper uh, level, just from the standpoint that I think there was something that was reflected in what happened yesterday that wasn't just about yesterday. It, it's about who you all are as a church. It is about what some of you as our partners that are doing so much in this city are doing at a deep level. And part of it, and, and, and here's where I want to come at this. You know, there is a value of Christ that, that is reflected in and through all that, that touched yesterday and what goes on our, on, on our city like on a regular basis through some of you that do such a beautiful job of loving on people period, right? And that's, that's the value. There's this value that you see with Christ about loving people, 
period, right? It's just this beautiful thing. And I want to look at it from uh, something that Jesus uh, actually taught, because I think there's some things that will just help us reflect and ponder it and think about it a little bit uh, here. And, you know, Jesus would have this way of telling stories or using metaphors. Um, Sometimes he would say something just flat out or direct, but oftentimes he would say things through a kind of story. We're going to look at this short little story. It won't take long, but it it causes you to to look at it differently and ask questions and kind of roll through the plot, so to speak, as the story unfolds. And this one that we're going to look at um, is about this king, this king uh, that just uh, wants to uh, uh, just lavish this kind of inheritance or these wonderful things on on this group of people. And it's through this story that we actually see some things about love that I think are really, really important. So uh, I'm going to read uh, part of this, and um, uh, we'll put the verses up on the screen, or you can look in your Bible either way. But there's this king, and he's got this group of people off to his, uh, his right here. And it says this, Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you are, my, uh, you are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you, since the creation of the world, right? Wow, like it's just, it's like, what? Like, what did that group of people do? Like, it's just like there's some, there's some value that he wants to point to in all of this. And so it goes on in verse uh, uh, 35, and it says, um, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. Think about this group hearing this, right? So, wow, like, he, like there's something that's really important to him. He noticed this. Um, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me, right? And what he's basically saying here is you loved on me. You saw me. I, I mattered to you. Like when, like, when I was thirsty, you saw that and you, you gave me something to drink. You, like, I was alone and you came alongside me. Like, he's just, he's just saying, I, I'm grateful for the way you loved me in this. And, and, and the thing that we're going to see in this, and if you already know the story, the, the weird thing in this is the people that he's talking about in this moment, they're like, what? Like, like we don't remember really doing that. And, and the story continues, continues to unfold. Look at how they uh, talk to this um, or speak to this. Verse 37. Again, it's this group of people. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Right? He's like, because in the story, it's like you're the king or the prince or whatever it is. Like you would never be hungry in this or thirsty and give you something to drink. When did, when did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? Right? We don't know. Like this, like I just like, you know, I, I don't remember actually doing this. And this is the part that actually begins uh, right where God's gonna say, I I want you to see my heart in this moment. This is the point where Jesus would tell these little stories like this, um, and there would be a twist. And in the twist of the story, that's like, that, that's where the point is made. That's where he drives this thing home, right? So he un, like he's unfolding this little bitty story and they're sitting there going, like, when, when did we ever do this? And here's kind of the punchline, the twist of the story. Verse 40, it says this. The king replied, truly I tell you, whatever you did for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Isn't that great? He's like, yeah, it, you, you actually did it for me. Because there was a time when there was someone that mattered to me. And they were hungry. And when you fed them, like that meant more to me. It meant as much as if you would have fed me in that moment. The way you loved that person who was alone, the way you loved that person that was sick or in need, like that and, and, and here's the point I'd make out of this. What, in a way, what Jesus is saying is, I love that you love people. That's what I love. I love it when you just love people. Like that's, that's the story. That's the punchline. That's his heart that just comes out in this moment, uh, in this. And so I think about, 
I think about those of you who are here this morning that are our partners that, that, that we got to serve alongside of. And I think about what you do week in and week out. I think about all of you that showed up yesterday that are a part of Casas. I think about all of you uh, that maybe you weren't, uh, maybe you didn't have the opportunity to do something yesterday, but you've done things in the past, multiple things in the past. Like I just, I think about you as a church and, and that's the punchline. Love people. Period, right? It's this beautiful thing. Now, um, for fear of just having a sermon go too short and having you all, you know, um, struggle with deep disappointment, let me make a few observations about this love, right? Yeah, you you weren't going to get off that easy, right? Um, uh, Let me make a few observations that I actually think are worth pondering, are actually worth celebrating, looking at, and thinking about here. Um, and again, I, and I say this, whether you're, uh, whether you're one of our partners in the city or whether this is your first time you're just visiting here or whether this is your church at home. Um, l- let me give you three quick, fairly quick observations in this. One is love is practical, right? What Jesus points out in that story is it, love doesn't have to be this massive theoretical, um, like theological. It's like you're just loving on people that are, that are hungry, you're just, you're taking care of basic needs. You're just seeing people in some uh, unique way. It's, it's just this simple, beautiful thing. And I want you to imagine this. I want you to imagine like what went on yesterday or even in the weeks or months before. But I even think about uh, yesterday. Um, like I know some of you like we're serving like with Primavera. How, how many of you, any, how many of you did anything with Primavera or anything like with, okay, like with food or like I know some of you are preparing meals and feeding, okay. Like, so I want you to think about this, right? In the most practical way, there's going to be, because some of you were preparing meals that were going to be given away later. And maybe, maybe one of those meals went to someone today. Maybe tomorrow morning, there's going to be someone that was homeless or someone that is, right? Their child is just getting out of the hospital. And they've been through a whirlwind and now they're loading up their child, they're out of the hospital and they're on their way home. And someone is gonna hand them a meal and say, we see you. And we know you've got really important things with your family you're trying to take care of. And we just wanna love on you a little bit, even if it's just provide, you don't have to worry about the next meal you're gonna eat. Here you go. It's that simple. It's just, it's like loving people in this beautiful way. Uh, Think about this. Think about someone who was uh, in another country, uh, maybe, I don't know, a month ago, six months ago, two, three years ago. And, uh, and maybe even it was someone that was uh, serving alongside other Americans or an American agency or a government in some way. And things shifted in that country and suddenly their life is in danger. And they've got to flee. And they end up right here in Tucson, Arizona, And they got uprooted and planted in another country and another culture. They don't speak the language. They don't understand all the things. And it doesn't matter what their education was back there. It doesn't matter if they were a doctor, if they were a business person. Like they're starting over from scratch when they get here. And what if, and this is true for many of them, right? uh, They're walking sometimes for hours every single day because that's the only way they have to get to a job. And it's whatever job they can work. And maybe tomorrow or next week, one of those refugees is going to have someone from, uh, from Tucson that's a part of the refugee ministry here in Tucson that we partnered with. And they're going to say, would a bike make a difference? And they're going to hand them a bike. And that bike... It, it will, it's going to be huge. It's going gonna, it's gonna to open them up to the possibilities of working to other places. Instead of spending hours every day walking to and from work, there, it becomes minutes. Like it's just, it, it's just, and here's the thing. Love is practical. It, it's as practical as a meal. It's as practical as a bicycle. Um, you know, uh, May is going to be here before we know it. And I know, like we know in this city, there are some high school students, right, that are going to be walking across a stage. And for some of those high school students, it might not have been that long ago. It may have been a year ago, two years ago, that the circumstances of their lives changed in such a way that they became, they became a young person in our city that was pretty much all on their own even trying to figure out where they were going to live or how to feed themselves. They were on their own. Imagine being like 
a young high schooler and being completely on your own. The dream of maybe walking across that stage is like, eh, that doesn't matter right now. But there are people in our city, right? That are a part of a ministry and an agency that are saying, those youth on their own, right? We're gonna help them out. We're gonna encourage them. We're gonna help them make sure that they've got a place to stay. We're gonna help them make sure, even if it's basic toiletries or making sure they've got clothes or can get school books or whatever, there's gonna be some kids this May. They're gonna walk across a platform and pick up their diploma because there's people in this city that said, we're gonna be there to encourage them. We're gonna be there to help them out. And the dream of a high school diploma didn't die, right? They're gonna go on to college or they're gonna go on to a career. And some of you, like you got to work side by side with some of those people this week. Love is just, it's practical. If there's, there's something so beautiful about the practicality of love. Another observation about uh, this love, love sees people. It sees people. There's this uh, kind of reverberating line uh, in one part of this story that Jesus uh, tells. And it's this, it, it, it's like, when did we see dot, dot, dot? When, when, when did we see you hungry? When did we see, when did we see? And it's this thing about this group of people, like they see people, like there's this thing. They don't just, right, uh, they're not projects, they're people. And there's something about love that never sees people as a project. They're people. And, you, and when you see them in that way, uh, you, don't, you don't do good things in the name of pity. You do it out of compassion and concern and empathy. Like there, there's this beautiful thing that begins uh, to go on. Um, one of the stories that I heard, uh, in fact, I didn't hear it until like about 30 minutes, maybe 20 minutes before the first service and was like, okay, I'm, this has got to go in my sermon. Um, a story about um, a grandmother uh, here in Tucson. She was actually from Wisconsin, but sleeping on an air mattress here in Tucson in some office building uh, somewhere where, the, and I don't know, and I, again, I don't know, I have all the details on this, but it was some of you that were helping out with the Ronald McDonald house that ended up running into this grandmother. And, and here's the story. She's not sleeping on a mattress in an office someplace right now because of the Ronald McDonald house. And she flew down here because her daughter-in-law uh, started to go, had some serious medical issues, went into premature labor um, like a month or two uh, too soon and has been in the hospital for more than a month now. But here's the thing. Her daughter-in-law and her son own a farm down in Bisbee and, and are trying to run a farm. And so the mom has to be in the hospital up here. Her husband and this grandmother's son it has to stay in Bisbee and uh, working and they have a toddler. So the grandmother, right, came down here to watch the toddler because her son's got to keep working the farm and her daughter-in-law's in the hospital. And the Ronald McDonald house is like, okay, I see you. I see, I see you trying. I see, gosh, man, this is beautiful what you're trying to do for your family. Can we just help you out and give you a better place to stay to take care of your grandchild while you're trying to love on your own daughter or your own daughter-in-law and your son. See, and some of you went down there and partnered with the Ronald McDonald house and you made like you, you changed like her life in some way because you see a person, not a project. Right, And there's this beautiful thing uh, that unfolds in this story about it's just, and when you look at the life of Jesus, he saw people. He saw them as human beings with a sense of dignity, right? Um, I got to experience this. I was on the Habitat for Humanity uh, site. How many of you were at, at Habitat? Bunch of you, you're, are you sore this morning from the swinging hammer? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, down at the Habitat site, I ended up getting to run into some other workers that actually have habitat homes, that, that they bought a home that was a habitat home. Um, I got to talk to some folks uh, that uh, are, are hoping to get into one, like they're starting to do all the work and they're saving money and they're going through all these classes and everything and just how excited they were. And one of the things I was struck by is I talked with each and every one of those that I was able to. Um, one of the things I was struck by is that they would say this over and over uh, again, is this idea of th there's this value with habitat 
Um, we don't give houses away. They, they, you will never hear them say, we give houses away, right? And maybe before this, I would have said, oh man, this is a wonderful ministry. They give houses away. And, they, and if I would have done that, I know they would have corrected me and said, no, 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 we don't give houses away, right? Because, and this was kind of the saying that I heard over and over again, we don't give people a handout. We give them what? A hand up. And here's why. And this is what I love about it. They're really unique. They are helping them uh, to understand the finances of how to, what it means to own a home. They are teaching them how to maintain this home. They are putting in hundreds and hundreds of hours to help build their own home along with uh, people that work full-time for Habitat and, and work alongside people like uh, us who would volunteer for a while in this thing. And they like, and when you hear them talking about how Habitat is giving them an opportunity to own their own lives in this way, what you see, what I saw in the eyes of all of them was this sense of dignity. Like they, they weren't giving something that pitied them in a way that held them down, they were like, they were really given a hand up. And I want to say this to any of our partners here that are a part of Habitat for Humanity. There is something that you give away. There is something that you do give away. And I saw it yesterday and it's dignity. You're giving away dignity. And man, that is a beautiful thing. And, and I don't want you to miss this point. I don't want you to miss this point. Um, when, when, there, when you see that kind of love, I want you to think of this. There are few things in this world that are more Christ-like than a love that gives dignity to another human being. Let me say that again. There are few things in this world that are more Christ-like than a love that gives another human being dignity. Right? When you look at the story of Jesus, he just lifted the dignity of people again and again and again. And I'm so glad that in this city, we have these partners like Habitat and ICS and Primavera and Gap and it just and the food banks on and on and that they see people. And because they see people, they... they they give dignity away. It is this beautiful thing. Okay, third observation. Third observation, and it's this. Uh, love has a cascading effect, right? And there's this kind of this interesting thing that, that Jesus is telling this story, and he says, yeah, it's kind of like this king or this prince. And when one of you loved someone over there, that the way you loved them, it's like it cascaded. It was like you were loving me. There's this thing about this kind of love that Jesus talks about that it just spreads. It inspires others to love other people in different ways. And it just becomes this beautiful thing. And you know, like that's part of what Jesus hoped for when he talked about love. And you see this. I, I saw this yesterday again because um, I spent time at the Habitat uh, place. I, I saw this. I saw that there was uh, one of the full-time workers there at Habitat uh, was just spending some time with some of the ladies uh, on our team. And, and, and I don't know what their exact job was because I kind of heard about this story after the, the fact. Um, but she really inspired some of, uh, of our volunteers, some of us at Casas, in a profound way. And then um, I learned kind of the backstory to it, that she was once a kindergarten teacher. And she could see the impact uh, that Habitat for Humanity had because she could see children in her kindergarten class that were struggling and that um, if they found, if they could buy a home, if that family could do that, she could see how it made a difference in the lives of those kids. And part of it was because in her own neighborhood, there was like a Habitat for Humanity a house nearby and she watched it change their lives, saw it in those kids so much so that uh, she went from, she started volunteering for Habitat for Humanity. And as she started volunteering for Habitat for Humanity, she ended up going um, full time with Habitat for Humanity. And so then we go out there to volunteer for a day and she's there and it's kind of like she's loving on us because we've showed up uh, to help with this thing. And she so inspired some of our ladies in this that they started thinking more and more about the family that would be in the house that they were working on. And remember, these families, they come in and they help work on the homes and, you know, and you're in the middle of construction. And so if you were to write something on the wall, right, um, 
uh, other people are gonna see it till that house is all finished out. And so these ladies from Casas wrote a note um, to this family that was gonna be uh, someday uh, getting uh, this house. But next time they come to work on the house, they're gonna get to see this note that the ladies wrote. And uh, Stacy took a picture of it for me, but I, I wanna I read to you uh, what they, here, here's what they wrote on the note on the side of the wall in the house. May this home be blessed with joy, filled with love and sheltered by peace. Here's to new beginnings and endless possibilities. Love, Casas Church. I can't wait for that family. Yeah, I can't wait for that family to walk in there and read that note. And you have to understand, it started because there was a kindergarten teacher that saw how some people that long ago, I don't know, it could have been years or a decade ago, were helping with Habitat Home. And the way they loved somebody, they loved a family, it touched a kindergarten teacher who turned around and that kindergarten teacher, right? Her love cascaded uh, into volunteering for Habitat for Humanity that then cascaded into working with them full time that then cascaded into some ladies that were a part of CASAS who then wrote a note that's just like, just a practical one moment of love that's gonna cascade into that family. Do you see how this works? Like there's just a beauty in it. And the fact that we get to work with other people in our city, that we get to work with one another in this, this is a part of the beautiful thing. And so here's, I wanna do this. I wanna, I wanna just mention our different partners here. So um, I wanna just take a moment because if you're one of our partners here, we wanna just uh, thank you for what you're doing in this city. So let me, let me just mention uh, these. Um, we worked with the Ronald McDonald House, which of course is uh, helping uh, families with uh, medical emergencies and needs. The Primavera uh, Foundation, which helps with uh, homeless men and helps with homelessness in general. Uh, the Gap uh, Ministry that has this amazing holistic approach to a foster care and all that they do to take care of uh, entire families, um, the Tucson Refugee Ministry. And what they do, uh, not just for refugees, but helping to build community and connection uh, in our city. They're the ones that did the whole thing uh, with the bicycles. Um, ICS, or Inter Interfaith Community Services, and uh, how they work on the short-term needs of people, but at the same time, they're always working on the long-term needs for people, like lifting them up and moving uh, them forward. Um, of course, Habitat for Humanity. Um, the Catalina State uh, Park, the, the group there that works on the, uh, the buffalo grass there, it's interesting. Uh, we had someone on our site, and I know this happened more than once, that when they found out that we as a church were also coming alongside uh, this, uh, this thing of, of pulling out the, the, the buffalo grass, that they were like, oh my gosh, thank you so much because uh, they lived in an area and they were like, I'm always worried about wildfires where I live. And it's like, your church would actually go out and care about that. And it's just, and you could just tell in a practical way, it's just, it was blessing them uh, in some way. Um, uh, Ben's Bells, which is this incredible organization that does so much to just, um, uh, to help bring the value of kindness into our community, into schools, in, into neighborhoods, uh, all over the place. Um, of course, all of the senior centers uh, that are just helping to love on and love uh, our oldest generation. And then, of course, youth on their own. So can, on behalf of this church, if you're a part of any of those ministries, can we just take a moment right now and applaud you and say thank you for what you do? Um, and, and I want you to know this, those applause that you just heard, just know that that is an encouragement to keep going. That if you're a part of one of those, those one of our partners or one of those agencies or ministries, we, like we, we went out there and served next to you because we get that you do this on a regular basis. And there can be moments where it can feel discouraging. And there can be moments where maybe you feel like you're all alone in this. And what we would want you to know is that we are for you. And that we see and just applaud the goodness 
and just the beautiful, practical love that you are exhibiting to people in our city because it is all about just love people, period. We appreciate that. And can I say this to all of you who call Casas Church uh, your home uh, here? Um, Maybe in some ways there are moments where there are small things or little things that you do. And it's like, man, it's just like a few times a year and I just go and maybe you were just, maybe you were in a warehouse and you didn't get to hear lots of beautiful stories. Like you were just, uh, you know, uh, filling boxes with something or you were preparing a meal in a back room and you didn't get to hear all the stories or whatever. Can I just say it, it matters. It matters what you do, even in little ways, because... We're a part of this bigger thing. And together, what you do um, is gonna touch someone's life. If not yesterday, today, or next week, or next month. And there's something that you are cascading into our culture and our city that we just can't get enough of these days, right? And that is just love in this. So thank you to all of you. Uh, in this. Um, I'm going to close this out here. And as I do, um, I want to just invite you, all of you. Um, We've got, uh, there's some hot dogs and food uh, prepared out there that I know you've heard about. uh, But um, we've got a bunch of our partners uh, that are out there. Go say hello to them. If you want to know more about one of their ministries or the work that they do, go talk with them. Say some encouraging things to to them and just, just enjoy this day. Um, that we got to be a part of other people in our community doing something good and beautiful. And if you're a guest here this morning, right, first time or whatever, I just, uh, I, I would love to meet you. I'm gonna be right over here by these high top tables. And I'd love to just welcome you this morning. I promise not to hang on to you too long so you don't, you don't get out and get some hot dogs or, or whatever. But I really would. I'd love to just to shake your hand here this morning. Why don't you stand and uh, I'll close this in prayer uh, here this, this wonderful, wonderful morning. Let, let me pray. Father, um, I just pray, you know, I just pray specifically for our partners that that we have some terrific people and we have some terrific agencies and ministries in this city that um, are doing something that we know matters to you. And we're behind that because we know it matters to you and we see the goodness of what they're doing and what we pray for, God. We pray that you give them strength. We pray that you just encourage them and that you give them vision and energy and that you bring others alongside them that help carry forward the beautiful thing that they're doing because what they do matters. And we pray all of this in your son's name. Amen. Have a great morning. See you next Sunday.